Prior to the development of the idea of a vanguard party of the working class, many Marxists took a variety of ineffective approaches towards socialist revolution. Trade unionism was the attempt to utilize radical trade unions to initiate a national scale general strike that would paralyze the economy and initiate a crisis in capitalism, in which the trade workers would rise up en masse and take over the government. The fault with trade unionism is the degree to which trade unions can be infiltrated and suppressed as well as the general reliance on economic crises to jumpstart the revolutionary process. Many Marxists became pessimistic and instead retreated to movementism, the belief that spontaneous and disorganized popular movements will manage to unite in advance towards revolution without any central guiding force or theory. The fault with movementism being reliant on spontaneity and the poor likelihood of these various movements somehow reaching a level of theoretical sophistication to mobilize the entirety of the working class towards revolution. Still, other Marxists became reformists, believing that revolution was impossible or unreachable at society's current stage. They believe that socialist revolution is unachievable until an ill-described circumstance makes it a possibility and are keen to wait for decades, in some cases even centuries, for these prophesized conditions to manifest. They assume the only thing that can be done at the current stage is to advocate for social and economic reforms, which, contrary to their beliefs, manages to actually strengthen capitalism not weaken it. Unfortunately, trade unionism, movementism, and reformism are still common pitfalls that plague the communist movement today with those tendencies which ignore the necessity of the vanguard party. The vanguard party is a necessary development because it does not rely on conditions to ripen. It does not rely on spontaneity or some future crisis to emerge. Rather, vanguardism mobilizes the most advanced sectors of the working class and, through the process of agitation and propaganda, the vanguard party emerges as the guiding leadership of the proletarian revolution. The function of the vanguard party. The communist party is the vanguard of the working class. This means its constituents are amongst the most class conscious members of its society. The goal of the Communist Party is to guide the masses of the working class to victory against the bourgeoisie and bring about a socialist revolution. Upon this victory, the task of the party is then to guide the masses forward and oversee the completion of the socialist project to build a dictatorship of the proletariat. In order to do this, the Communist Party must be a party of the working class first and foremost. It must maintain the socialist road over the capitalist road and revolution over revisionism. It must also strive to guide the masses while not going so far ahead in the socialist project as to alienate themselves from the masses. This is called ultra leftism. And it must also not lag behind and allow the masses to lead the charge without the theoretical knowledge of the Communist Party to guide them. This is known as tailism. The Communist Party being the revolutionary vanguard must be the tip of the spear and be the first and primary catalyst for completing the socialist revolution through careful application of the mass line the party maintains in touch with the masses and does not stray too far ahead and become ultra leftist nor does it stray too far behind and become tailist it also maintains a connection to the masses and avoids becoming a commandist bureaucracy which is alienated from the working class. Through refining its theory, through practice and criticism, and avoiding alienation by a disciplined adherence to the mass line, a communist party remains the vanguard of the socialist revolution. The party enables the advanced sections of the working class to lead the way and brings up the rear by educating the masses into socialism. In doing so, the party guides the masses to complete the socialist project.
The Organization of the Vanguard Party The Vanguard Party is organized according to the principle of democratic centralism. The idea that inter-party debate, line struggle, criticism, and self-criticism occurs democratically within the party to develop a line in which the minority is subordinate to the majority. With all major decisions of the party occurring democratically in this manner, every member, provided that they are not malicious or a hostile element, should be permitted to speak, even if they are mistaken, and every member should also have the ability to criticize and be criticized. However, once the period of debate, criticism, and discussion are concluded, and the party measures are passed, the party cadres are duty-bound to uphold the line as decided by the democratic majority. This is in order to prevent the emergence of factionalism and the domination of petty bourgeois individualism and a lack of discipline. By correctly applying the principle of democratic centralism, the party emerges unified, disciplined, and able to rapidly respond to any circumstance in a manner that sees the party function as a coherent and cohesive revolutionary force. In a future episode, we will discuss the mass line and how this also applies to the party's functions. But the important thing to note here is that the party must always seek to refine its actions and practice through an engagement and entrenchment with the revolutionary masses of the working class. The party must not be detached from the workers, but in tune with their immediate needs and concerns and use their constructive criticisms and conditions to further develop a party's practice. So that about does it for episode six. Just to review, we went over the necessity of a vanguard party, some of the various traps that uh, a rejection of vanguardism will instill in the movement. We talked about the function of a vanguard party. And finally, we talked about the organization of a vanguard party. In the next episode, we will talk about imperialism as the highest stage of capitalism. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I look forward to reading everyone's input, and I'll catch you on the next episode. Danky Kang out.